To bring the species back, laws were introduced to manage hunting seasons. Today, the white-tailed deer remains a food source for man, coyote, wolves, and black bears in Maine. Other large mammals weren't as lucky. The woodland caribou and gray wolf were hunted to extinction. It is the fresh water that breathes the green of life into Maine's fields and forests. Rivers rush the state from Canada, while a steady average rainfall of 44 inches a year fills the ponds and streams. Most of the lakes are clear and cold and remain topped by underground springs. Where it is not confined, Maine's water escapes, careening down granite riverbeds into the vast expanse of a piece of America that remains wild. The rivers of this state provide life and opportunity. The white water of the Kennebec, Dead, and Penobscot rivers brings with it a rush of adrenaline and a rafting experience to be remembered throughout a lifetime. Designed to offer safe trips, commercial outfitters accompany the experienced and train the novice in what has become one of the most popular ways to explore northern and central Maine. Many of Maine's rivers begin or later spill into one of 6,000 naturally formed lakes and ponds. Like veins, streams meander through the wilderness offering a continuance of life. The force sustains man and wildlife here. Lakeside development has had an influence on wildlife numbers, particularly in southern Maine. Large mammals have slowly migrated to northern and central lake regions as man has encroached on their habitat. Moosehead Lake, the state's largest, covers 117 square miles and is a perfect example of a healthy coexistence between man and wildlife. A haven for recreational enthusiasts, Moosehead also provides the opportunity to see wildlife, particularly birds. For some species, it is but one stop in their migratory pattern. For others, it is home. The mammals that depend on freshwater for their survival are thriving in Maine. Mink, otter, muskrat, and beaver, once trapped to near extinction for their pelts, are now enjoying a healthy existence here. The balance, though, is a delicate one. Beaver, while important in the wildlife arena because of its ability to create new ecosystems by flooding, enrage many humans because they do just that. Many dams are taken down assuring the ultimate destruction of the beaver's family as well as the end of a diverse habitat area. A beaver's house is called a lodge. It's built out of piles of hardwood sticks and mud. This is an example of a bank lodge. They also build dome lodges in the middle of a pond. They literally chew their way into the lodge to make a den on the inside. There's usually two to three levels, and the whole family lives in there together.
If you want to see some beaver activity, you, you look for an open waterway where there's lots of hardwood trees. You can look around on your way down to the water and find trees that have been chewed on by beavers, and it's very obvious the chiseled teeth have been at this one. When you get down to the water, see if you can find the lodge, which is dome shape, and also there should be a dam around someplace in the vicinity. Watch the water closely and you'll see some rippling just before the head comes up. And you want to stay pretty quiet or you're going to get a slap of the tail, which is an effort to scare you off. The beaver creates the most important habitat to our ecosystem. Hundreds, literally thousands of animals thrive in a beaver habitat. Songbirds, reptiles, other water mammals, all kinds of animals enjoy living near and around beaver ponds. It's one of the greatest gifts that nature could give to our planet is the beaver for what it creates. Even after they move on and the ponds all dried up, there's a lovely meadow that's left behind and all the meadow animals move in. It's just a cycle that continues to rejuvenate our planet. At the turn of the 19th century, those highest on the food chain were the ultimate losers in their fight for existence. Raptors like the bald eagle and peregrine falcon were soon endangered. Many hawks became threatened. Pollution, poisoning, and death by shooting were the first killers. Later, the pesticide DDT took its turn. Slowly building up in its victims' tissues, the chemical put a near halt to the reproductive cycle of many raptors. The biggest problem in the past has been that we didn't really understand the pesticides that we've been using. We haven't understand a lot of the chemicals that we've used in the environment. And of course, the classic example is DDT, which has caused uh, very serious effects on the raptor population in the state of Maine. When DDT or other pesticides are sprayed onto crops, for example, or in the forest, the uh, small insects and are eaten by smaller birds, and then the small birds are, are eaten by um, the larger birds, such as uh, sharp shin hawks or uh, peregrine falcons, for example. That DDT then is increased in quantity as you go up the food chain. And in the peregrine falcons, it reaches a, a pinnacle and has deleterious effects on egg production and other aspects of, of the animal's uh, life histories. Well, the ospreys and the bald eagles now are coming back uh, in great abundance. The ospreys, um, people have even stopped counting them now. There are so many in the state of Maine. And that trend should continue. We should see more and more birds uh, birds of prey coming back. The eagle population is growing at, a, a, at an extremely nice rate now, um, greater than 800 mating pairs in the state of Maine. And um, that's definitely on the rise. Although Maine's bald eagle population has bounced back over the past decade, it is still considered to be in danger of extermination. The majority of the birds make their home in the northeastern coastal areas of Hancock and Washington counties. After being nearly destroyed by pesticides in the 1950s in Europe and most of the United States, the peregrine falcon has come back. A pair now nest on the cliffs of the Precipice Trail on Mount Desert Island. Another peregrine species, the eastern anatum peregrine, was indigenous to Maine but disappeared over 50 years ago. The skies above Maine's 5,200 miles of coastline are the path of migration for thousands of species of raptors, seabirds, wading birds, shore, and songbirds. Only a few of them stay here during the winter months, the chickadee, 